Well, I don't know about you, but if you're a seeker of advice, maybe you've asked different people to say, hey, would you give me a tidbit of advice? Would you share some insight with me? I saw a Facebook posting this week where someone said, you know what, I'm just hungry to hear some advice. Someone just give me a tip, give me some advice, how to be successful, etc., etc. They were wanting to learn the pathway of how to be our highest and best. Well, today the scripture is offering us some great advice. Advice for our lives, for the pathway of great success. It begins with this. The great advice is just let it flow. How important it is that we are the people of God who are letting the divine presence flow in and through our lives. How appropriate it is that Scott opened up the service today with that song, I am opening up to the good, meaning I am letting it flow. I'm allowing something to happen within our lives. And I'm talking about this divine flow, this wonderful grace and goodness of God. This divine flow or this life of living in divine flow is living without the mind and its ego and all of its created uh, obstructions and constructs that seem to be blocking the journey. You know how mind and ego always wants to create some sort of block in our life that's constantly saying, well, you know what, I don't know if it's, imp if it's possible. Let me tell you. The minute you say, I don't believe it's possible, is the minute you are saying, I don't want it. I don't want all of divine flow because I don't really believe that the goodness of God, the very grace of God is flowing to that extent in my life. And so I don't believe it's possible. And what you're actually saying is, I don't want it because we know all things are possible. This life of living in divine flow is one that begins with feeling and connecting to our own divine presence and essence within our lives. It's connecting with the whole of who you are and this whole of the universe and pulling it all together in a sense of oneness because this universe is all about grace and goodness and it's ever desiring to flow in and through and around you. It's always wanting to flow for you the good the very grace of God. And we often have a challenge with flow because we are good as humans about building up dams and barriers and walls to the goodness that is really so accessible to us if we simply break down these barriers. The divine flow of good is happening right here and now in this very moment. And many times we're just not attentive we're not intuitive enough to know and experience how it's happening because we've built up these walls and these barriers within our lot. Our lives become like the Hoover Dam of our spirituality. That's right. You know the Hoover Dam, this great wall, this great barrier that's holding back the river's waters and keeping it and limiting its flow restraining it and that's what so happens in our lives so often that we are creating these kind of barriers in our life because we're good at this now i come from a dutch family my mother came from holland and in holland having a chance to go and visit my ancestors and relatives i had the opportunity to tour so many quaint little villages that are below sea level and they are surrounded by walls and barriers that hold back and I'm so grateful for those who have the ability to build walls in this physical world, to restrain the waters so that these little villages could rise up and exist. But in our spiritual life, we've got to be really good at breaking down those walls and those barriers. We've got to be want people who learn how to tear them down brick by brick and remove them from our lives so that we can receive the highest and best within our journey. Because when it comes to our spiritual life, what we want to do is be open, opening up to the good. To understand the flow of God's goodness in our lives, we've got to pause for a moment and understand grace. That's right, grace. Grace has been defined by many different ways, and many different words. It's sort of multifaceted, but let me describe grace to you in this way. Grace is God's love. Grace is God's love flowing. It's flowing in us. It's God's love flowing through us and around us and for us. I can't emphasize that phrase over and over enough because when we begin to visualize the word picture, 
of God's love in us, we begin to make that connection with this universe of good. When we begin to grasp the visual of God's love through us, that means that that wonderful power of goodness and grace is then in the mode of flow. And it is not only coming in, but it's blowing outward. And it is around us at all times. And we capture that visual then of the goodness of God all around us at all times. God's goodness is here. God's goodness is there everywhere I am. There is goodness that's surrounding me. And it is such powerful grace that it's always for you for your highest and best in so many ways. We're defining grace as the very love of God, the love that is expressing God's very divine nature, God's character. I can't emphasize enough how important it is that we study and examine the very character of God because that's our divine nature as well. God dwelling in us and working through us. So when we understand the very character of God being love, and that love being so generous, so gracious, so giving, we understand that that love then is that which is, has a power to prosper us as we we're studying in the class on Thursdays at 10 a.m. to enable us to be our living our highest and best and to be in the journey of great prosperity. Because once you know the character of God and you understand that God's true essence is love, then that love, which is so generous, now becomes fully aware within you and you understand this is your essence as well. There's a passage in scripture that says, he that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. And here's our challenge. We sometimes don't know God enough to know love to love ourselves, to love our world around us, to love others. So when we know love, when we begin to love, when we begin to love in such a way that we're allowing this divine flow to go through us, around us, for us at all times, what we're really doing is we are knowing God to the highest level. Too often in the world of religion, religions are more and more becoming about the absence of love and more about religiosity or becoming more and more religious versus becoming more about love. For God is love and that love is truly accepting of one another and there is no favoritism. There's no sense of someone being included and someone being excluded at any time within the journey. That's the divine flow of love. It is an unconditional, ever giving presence. What we have to realize is that kind of love is also our nature, your true nature. That's who you really are. You really are a loving being. So why not be true to and authentic to yourself? That the very nature that you've been created in, created in the image and likeness of God, is that of love. So we understand that this love then is an unmerited favor. That's what grace is. You don't earn it. You don't do something to get it. There's not people who say, I worked hard to get God's grace and I've earned it above others. No, it, grace is given freely to each and every one. Grace is unmerited favor. You don't earn it. You don't deserve it. You just have something like you say, something you do to get it but it's just so freely given. You see, that's the love of God, so freely given. That's the grace of God, so freely given. That's the generosity of God, so freely given. Oh, if we could only comprehend how generous God is, that God wants your highest and best and would make all uh, pathways open for you to receive it. But it's we who stand in the way, who created these walls and barriers to the very generosity for the divine flow that wants to come in and through our lives of the goodness of God. The generosity of God is wanting your highest and best. And if God wants your highest and best, well, shouldn't we also tune in to say, I want my highest and best. I want that too. God wants it for me. I should want it for myself. And this is here the challenge for us in our lives as so many people haven't taken time to really say, 
I do want the highest and best. And I understand God is giving it to me freely. This is the grace. This is the love. This is the generosity that we describe, uh, that we use to describe God. For grace is God's gift of love freely given. And the only thing is we have to accept it or we refuse it. And we do a lot of things in life that sort of create barriers that are refusing the goodness of God. We're not able to accept it at all times within the journey of our life. Ephesians chapter two, verse eight and nine says, for it is by grace or by love, you could use either word, you've been liberated through faith. And this is not from yourselves, but it is a gift, a gift, freely given, not by works, it's freely given. So we must get that, that it's freely given every single day of your life. Love is there every single day of your life. Grace is there every single day of your life. Generosity of the divine presence is there every single day of your life. It's given so freely so that no one should boast and say, hey, I'm better than you. I've earned it. I've worked harder than you. I have really worked hard to be the spiritual person. And I am highly favored of God, more so than others. You see, the scripture is inviting us to understand the free gift that is generously given. You see, the word grace is then synonymous with the word love. It's unconditional. It's impartial. It's unsolicited. It's just always there. Love is always there. Grace is always there. And the generosity that is in incorporated in this very graciousness and goodness of God is always there for you in your life. It's always in operation. And there's nothing that we can do to increase its availability. Nothing. But we can resist it by holding our thoughts and feelings in opposition to love. So one of the great walls we build up in our life is that in any way or shape or form, we are in opposition to being loving, to being gracious to others. See, love, grace, and generosity are all about something that we are to give away. Grace is meant to be given away because it's a free gift. And as we embrace our divine nature, we realize, wait a minute, I'm here also to be a, a, an revelation of this divine presence and to freely give love freely give grace to one another to freely give in a spirit of great generosity to the world around me so let's get this divine flow going in our lives how about it let's get that divine flow happening within our lives now let's understand that grace is the inner realization that we are already one with god not something you have to work at you're already one with God. It's just simply realizing this truth, accepting this truth, because you're created in that divine image. From the very beginning, the essence of who you are in this world is this divine presence, this love. So begin to realize I am one with love. I am one with grace. I am one with this incredible generosity of the universe. And let's re relieve ourselves, remove the false beliefs in our own mind that somehow we're separate from God, that we are somehow removed from this divine presence, that it's not in us, that it's not through us, that it's not around us, and that it's not for us. Let's remove that from our thinking. We'll wake up in the morning and go, I am one with the divine. The divine is flowing in and through me. Boy, when your feet hit that ground and you step out of the bed and you have this consciousness, I am one with the grace, the goodness. I am one with the generosity. I am one with the love of God. You're ready to accomplish some amazing things. When we step out in that kind of mantra, that kind of thinking, that kind of thought within our life. Grace is the aspect of divine love, which does not deal in an even exchanging but it's the increase of good through greater giving. I love this statement. Let's think about this for a moment. Grace does not deal in an even exchanging, meaning you've done something and so you get even exchange for it. Oh, no, 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 no. The grace of God 
is all about an increase, going above and beyond. The scripture says, God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you could ask or think. Everything that you could comprehend. Everything that comes to your mind. God is greater. God is willing and more generous to give above and beyond. The love of God is above and beyond these kind of things. You see, it is an increase for good. It's not an even exchange. It's an increase. Grace explains then this inadequacy of the idea of karma. You know, karma, sowing and reaping. You know, you get what you have put out in this world. It comes back to you as a world of karma. We think of this endless cycle of then of cause and effect in our lives. But grace explains the inadequacy of this. It's true that what you sow, you reap. But the grace of God says you never completely reap the harvest of error because grace is there pulling you up. Grace is there offering goodness. Grace is there offering love. God is doing this at all times that even though we're caught up in the error of our ways, the grace of God is there. Minimizing the impact of the cause and effect cycle that we live in. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9 tells the story of the Apostle Paul proclaiming, God, my grace is, or God's grace is sufficient, that the grace of God is sufficient for each and every one of us. We understand this because Paul's prayer was about removing of the thorn that was in him, some sort of obstacle or some sort of challenge that he was facing in his life that was brought about by karma, by sowing and reaping, because all of our challenges, all of our difficulties are there because of cause and effect within our life. And his prayer was that it somehow be removed, but grace, God's love, God's generosity gave him the power to bear it, to work through it. That Paul's sense of weakness was then lifted up and encouraged by the very grace and goodness of God, that no matter what he was facing, God's grace, God's love was generous in every moment. Grace doesn't deal with an even exchange, but is interested in the increase of good in your life. That's right. When we understand this unmerited favor of God, this graciousness, it's all about an increase in your life that you always reap more good than the positive you could express. There's always going to be more good out there because that's the generosity of God. That's the love of God. That's the grace of God. It's even more, it's even greater. It's an increase. Now letting the flow of this wonderful divine flow that we're talking about, this divine flow of God's love, this divine flow of God's grace, this divine flow of God's generosity happen to our life, it begins by accepting it. That's right accepting it to say, I am going to let it flow. I'm going to take this advice to heart. I'm going to just let, allow, I'm going to accept it in this moment and allow the divine goodness to flow in and through my life. We then become recipients then of all that God, the divine source wants to give us. Because I want to tell you this, God is willing to meet us more than halfway. God is always there in the midst of your challenges to meet you more than halfway with this wonderful, giving, generous, gracious love that we describe over and over again. And we have to note, God is always giving. That's the very nature of God, always giving. Yet we somehow get the ideas that somehow God is withholding from us. And that is a limiting thought. And one that we have to release and let go. For the generosity of God is not withholding anything from us if you're experiencing any kind of lack. It has to do with your own thoughts and beliefs in your life. So let us know that God is always there as the source of our blessings. And when we open ourselves up to divine flow, what happens is it exceeds any good that we could ever imagine in our life. So as conscious creators with God, it's important for us to do some work. Let me offer you a little homework assignment. I want you 
to start claiming this grace, this love, and this generosity of God. So I'm encouraging you to name and claim the good that's rising up within you that you so desire. What would you like to see happen in your life? What good would you like to experience? What blessing? What do you desire within your life? Because let me tell you this, in your spiritual evolution of your soul, it's important that you desire something more because we're committed to a lifetime of spiritual growth. That means I'm not content with my yesterday. I want more. I want something more than I had. I desire more. I desire more of the goodness of God, more of the presence of God, more of the awareness of God. I want more. So whatever that may be, know that as you're seeking this divine presence, that it will manifest in blessings in your life, material and spiritual within you. So name that good that you feel that is an impulse rising up with you from your heart's desire. And when you've named it, I want you to write it down, okay? Write down the desires of your heart and you're claiming the good. Take a little journal or a notebook and write it down. And once you've written down your desire, I want you to write the day's date. Today's date. So I am desiring more love, more grace, more generosity in my life, or I'm desiring more goodness, or I'm desiring more uh, prosperity in ways that I can share with my world. And I'm desiring today, January 24th, 2021, write the date. And then when the gift is received, I want you to put in the next column, the date that it's received. And what you'll find over the course of your life is a journal of God's grace, God's love, and God's generosity unfolding for you that will be so empowering for your faith. It's gonna be amazing when you look back and say, I was claiming this and I was naming this for my life. I was naming health and wholeness and healing. I was naming this blessing. I was naming this gift from the generous divine spirit of God. And here's the date I named it. And here's the date it manifested. And as we look back, we find here's the generosity of God being a visual for us. And this enables us to let it flow, let it flow. Because as you look back and say, wow, when I released all of my obstructions, all the walls and barriers that I built up, all the dams to the goodness of God, and I began to claim it and name it and begin to write it down with such anticipation and expectation, wow, I began to live in divine flow and I began to experience it in greater ways. Now, letting divine flow happen within our life will also be enhanced as we spend time in prayer. The more we pray, which is simply just communion with God. People say, well, wait a minute, I, I really wanna have some fancy words. I wanna know how to pray. I wanna know how to pray in some eloquent ways. It's the simplicity of your heart. It's the true nature of your heart that you're expressing that's simply in communion with God that's so powerful and so beautiful. For the more we pray, the more we commune with God, the more we experience the grace of God until we finally realize that, you know what? We live by grace. We live by God's love. We live by the very generosity of this divine source. We live and have our being and exist in this for we are the offspring of this divine spirit. And you know what? When we begin to turn our attention from this physical world into the spiritual world, wow, we realize how much grace is at work, how much God's love is at work, how much God's goodness is there to be experienced. For prayer is more than asking God for help in this physical world. It is in its highest sense, the opening up of our soul. That's right, the opening up to the good. How important it is that we embrace that because that's what prayer is. It's opening up the soul to this divine flow and allowing it to flow in our lives. It's opening up our soul, sort of like a spiritual umbilical cord that connects us to this divine womb of the Spirit of God where we are being fed and nurtured. You know, like the fetus inside the womb uh, attached to the umbilical cord, which is the, the flow from the mother flowing into the baby. Well, this is the divine flow of God, our divine source flowing in and nurturing us, caring for us, providing for us, loving us. 
So I want you to remember that God answers even before you ask. That's the love. That's the grace. That's the generosity. It's already there before you even ask. So when you are in prayer and expressing the desires of your heart, know that it's already been provided for you. You just got to let it flow. You just got to let it flow and take that advice to heart. I'm going to let grace flow in my life. I'm going to let love flow in my life. I'm going to let the goodness and generosity of God flow in and through me because our part is to make prayer an open channel through which God's answers can come and flow because the design of God is to ever meet the needs and desires of our heart. So making a commitment to prayer is the quickest way of releasing any walls and barriers and opening yourself up to the very good. But when the conscious mind is quieted, that's all that monkey chatter in your mind. When it's quieted and we turn inward, we become this open channel then for which grace can flow. And any resistance to grace then gives way and it's just removed and released. And this grace, this compassion, this love, this mercy. Oh, we could go on to describe grace in so many different ways. And we like to just sum it up, this love, this generous love that flows in our lives. So today I'm offering some advice, some advice that the scriptures and the ancient spiritual truths have offered us down through the ages. Let it flow. Let the divine goodness, grace, the divine goodness, love, the divine goodness that is ever generous flow in and through your life. Amen.